Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman and this is the Christensen Fish. Just a straight up fish. Doesn't have a model name, it's just the Christensen Fish. Why is it the Christensen Fish? Because like a, a, like a lot of other, or can we say again, like a lot of other twin fin, twin pin fishes, all inspired by Steve Liss. Uh, this fish has a lot of other fish in the ocean that look similar to this fish, but it also has a lot of subtle differences that, uh, that Chris has shaped into the board. Um, when you look at the outline, it does look very classic, you know, twin fin fish. Uh, the, the things that, that stand out about this board and the very first thing that you see when you, when you take it under your own arm and look at it is the bottom shape. And so most fish have a flat, relatively flat bottom to a V in the tail. Out, so basically flat up here to V back here. When you have the ability to look at this, and I'm not really sure how much is going to come through your iPhone when you're looking at this, but we're going to change the angles just a little bit because what you have is you actually have a flat bottom board or maybe even a little bit of belly in the board, but with a single concave shaped through the middle of that plane. And so what it does is it gives you the hold and the drive that you would get off of a single, uh, excuse me, off of a single concave board, but it also gives you everything that you would have gotten out of a, out of a regular fish. So in, in, uh, in differentiating this from a standard, from a standard like Steve List style fish, the, that concave helps a lot. It gives you a lot more speed and projection, even more so than what you would get out of this type of board, which is actually known for speed and projection. It gives you more, but it also gives you more hold <clears throat> on the wave as well. So looking at that angle just a little bit, maybe looking at it from the side, it's pretty pronounced and you can kind of see it like drop right down right down into here and then back out. Also, I think the rails are more refined. If you look at the rail shape, uh, and I notice this on all my Christensen's, whether it's a, a sea bucket or a flat tracker or Monotilus uh, or this fish, is that there's just subtle differences in the rails. They're more refined. There's a little bit more pulled off the bottom, a lot more pulled off the top. And even though it's a higher volume board, like the rail engages very, very easily without just making a really, really thin rail. Because you could go like super, super thin and say, hey, that's gonna engage really easily. Or you could do like subtle, tiny, subtle tweaks. And that's what uh, this board has. And, and actually all of the Christensen's that I've served so far, they just have that extra little bit of time and effort put into the rail that makes the board connect to the wave uh, that much easier. This board, again, like most fishes out there, it's gonna have a really wide range. It has uh, grovel ability. Uh, it has you know good mid range to the board. Uh, it's going to love like a flatter face wave, which I think all fish do. Uh, and it's a great board for like hauling down the line and covering a lot of ground down the line, and then turning all that speed into turns. Uh, what this board does, I think, differently than a fish is I think you could ride this board in in better, or actually not only I think like I know you can ride this board in in better ways because. Uh, this board I absolutely loved at the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse, uh, which is one of our heavier waves here. And in chest high and even to overhead, it's, it still worked really well. Um, where I think a lot of the other fishes would have been sliding out and like, frankly, like kind of scary at that point. Where the rails on this board and then the concave bottom just gave it a whole lot more grip. And the, the setup of like having a wide tail with these keel fins, uh, just so much drive, so much drive. That that wave is is really funny in that when you're in parts of it, it feels like the wave has tons of power, and then you get into other parts of that wave, and it feels like it has no power at all. Like the flat spots are really flat, and then the the heavy spots are really heavy. This board still has the ability to pump like mad and just fly through the flat spots where a, a short board would be uh, dogging quite a bit on that on that wave. So or in parts of that wave, the. Um, Looking at the tail of the board, the tail also really thins out uh, when you get back to the end to the end of the board. So it's not like super thick at the end of it. These the twin and you know the swallow tail or other people call it a twin pin. <clears throat> when you get back here, it's really really thin. And on on this board, just like on the Nautilus, uh, this board you could get going absolutely mad fast. 
and then when you bank it into a, a wrapping turn, you know, back into the pocket, you can literally feel the the twin pins flexing independently of each other and and bending like almost like a uh, almost like a snowboard. And it's a it's an incredible feeling like when you load these things up and they and they spring out and it gives them a much more alive feel um, than a than a board that was made 40 years ago. You know, so rather than rather than looking at it or even actually longer ago longer ago than that rather than looking at it and saying like oh well it's going to ride like all those other boards which i think are a, most people's initial impression this thing's got a lot more performance to it uh more speed more grip in in better waves and uh and the ability to just do some crazy turns at, at high speed really really loaded up uh where this thing would fit in your quiver uh if you're looking for an alternative with something like with really good glide and, and good drive and speed down the line, it would, it would work really well there. Um, you know, if you're, a lot of people out there already have a fish and they're looking for their next fish, this would be a great board to look at because it, you know, it has a lot of those familiar feelings um, that your fish does that you've been surfing for a long time now, but it's gonna have um, more performance as well. And I think, you know, feeling that rail, feeling the extra speed that comes, speed and control that comes out of that concave and then the, just the, the crazy turns that this thing can do is, is super, super fun. Uh, there's always a, uh, a Volon deck patch. So you can see like this dark green kind of tint right here. And that's uh, an additional layer of uh, Volon glass put on the deck just to reinforce it where you're standing all the time. And just, a, just an awesome board. This, this is my own board here that I, that I surfed uh, for the review. And it's a, uh, it's a 6 21 and 3 quarters, 2 and 7 eighths. And for me, at like 215, 220 pounds, uh, this thing works out well. Um, they do say you want to ride these things short, so you, you don't want to get them uh, super, super long. If you're looking for a longer fish, that would be the Christensen Nautilus. These boards, you want to try and size them as short as you possibly can uh, to get the most performance out of the design. Because you got to remember, um, for any given length that you're riding, the board is pretty wide, right? From the very, very, very end of the board all the way to the nose. The board, the board is carrying a lot of its width for most of its length. So looking at the fin set up in this board, it is a dedicated twin fin fish. Um, you cannot set this board up as a thruster. You cannot set it up as a quad. It is dedicated. You are fully committing to twin fin. Uh, the, board, the fins that we have in here uh, are the Sea Shepherds by Futures. And that's a, a keel fin. Uh, that works well in this box um, and with this fin. Futures offers a, a bunch of different templates uh, in keel fins, and you can also use a little bit more vertical fin as well if you wanted to, um, but I, I find most people tend to use the, the keels in this board. Also, uh, Chris Christensen makes a set of Christensen keels that are available through Captain Fin Company and also at Reel as well. Uh, but all of these fins are long base, a lot of rake, drivey, drivey, drivey. Like you look at this fin and then you imagine like posting off of it, pushing off of it with your foot. These fins create a lot of drive and a lot of squirt like out, out of your turns, uh, which is great great for generating speed. And it also gives you um, a lot of hold off of, the, off of these fins. So it's a dedicated twin fin setup with Futures. Uh, Christensen makes these boards uh, two different ways. He makes them with Future boxes and then he, they also make them uh, with glassed on marine ply keel fins. And we, we do the marine ply glass ons as a custom order because that's a really specific setup that is a great board. Like if you live at a break with a, if you live at a place that has like a nice point break or you're like, okay, I'm buying this board specifically for my home break, makes it a lot harder to travel with. Uh, and so we, we st all the boards that we stock, we stock them with a future setup because that way you could take the fins off, you could try different fin sets, uh, but when you're traveling, you could just take the fins off and lay it flat with the rest of your shortboards. It's a Christensen fish, a modern twist on the Steve Liss classic. Definitely, uh, definitely a board that you should check out. If you have any more questions on this board, give us a call at the shop, 252-987-6000, or look us up online, realwatersports.com forward slash surfing. Thanks for tuning in.